Hello, welcome to my channel. In this episode, we want to uh, have the introduction into coordinate geometry 2, which is the geometry of the circle. So, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing, like, and share. Come to this space. Let's have a tutorial on the coordinate geometry. This will be the first episode. So, for us to be able to have this, we can take the coordinate geometry of a circle which is having its center as the origin of the xy plane meaning if i have the xy plane and if a circle is drawn with each center be the origin of the xy plane you know this is be the y axis and this will be what your x axis so if you have any point let's see the point p it will be x y be any point on the circle it could be anywhere and we know that if i join the center to that point that is going to be a line from the center to any part of the circumference give us what radius so this is going to be the radius of this circle which in this case if i joined this point let's say to another point Q. We know that the moment this line is perpendicular to the x-axis, it will form a right angle out there. So this triangle becomes a right angle triangle, with this being the origin. So we can have the length OQ, PQ, and OP. So since this is a triangle, we can also try to deduce the, the length of the, the vertical line, which is parallel to the y-axis, and this is already the x-axis so this is going to be our x value meaning from zero to this place will be any value on the x-axis then from right here is the origin up to this place will also be any value on the y-axis so if i want to manipulate the x y r together to see the relation between them i can use the pythagoras theorem you know, using the Pythagoras theorem, we can say that the length of the longer side, you know, this is the longer side, so the square of that is equal to the, the sum of the squares of the two shorter side. And in this square plus this square equals to the square of the longer side in terms of Pythagoras theorem. So if you are asked to find the equation, this becomes the equation of a circle whose center is what? Zero, zero. It means the center is the origin. So if you are asked to find any equation of a circle whose radius is given to you, if the radius is given and the, the center of the circle is given as zero, zero, which is what? The origin then your equation is going to be in this form. And we are using this form because we are using the Pythagoras theorem. But we can also use the coordinate geometry one, that is finding the distance. We know the R is the distance between the origin and the P. So if you're asked to find the distance between two points where their coordinates are given, don't forget O is going to be what? Zero, zero. Which means X1, Y1, X2, Y2. If you are asked to find the distance, r is the distance, which will be the square root of x2 minus x1 all square plus x, sorry, y2 minus y1 all square. That is finding the distance between two points whose coordinates are given. Okay. But don't forget, if I want to clear this square root, what will I do? I will be squaring both sides. If I square both sides, I'll be having r squared equals to x2, which is going to be this, minus x1, which is going to be 0. And x minus 0 will still be, become what x. Then the square will come. y2 will be this y, minus y1 will be this 0, and that will still be what? Equals to this. So the equation of a circle can be found when the center is what 
the origin, the zero zero. It can be found using the Pythagoras theorem or using the, the magnitude of uh, a line, that is the, the length between two points. All right, so this is one way. Now, when we are asked to find the equation of a circle whose center is not at the origin, then it means this formula cannot work. How do we get that formula? So let's say we have our x, y, and the circle is right here. It is no more having a center as the origin. So we can say the center is a value other than zero. So it could be a and b. It could be any values, negative or positive. Provided if negative, it means it could be either here or the other side. All right. Now, if that is the case, and I still can get any point on the circle, which will still be P, <coughs> the point there will be X, Y. If I join this center, I believe I'll still have my radius. So that will still be your R. And this is going to be the origin. Or well, let me use different point. Let me use uh, A. <coughs> now, if I want to have this line onto the x-axis, you know this, onto that. Don't forget, I can also continue to have this to this place, to this place. Then finally, if I join the end together, don't forget, it's going to form 90 because this is going to be perpendicular to this line. If this line is horizontal, it will be perpendicular. Now, all the way, we know that from here, this is the A, I mean that's the point we have on the x-axis. For me to be able to have any point there, it should be A, which is the a point on the x-axis and a point on the y-axis. So, if this is 4, 4, 2, or 5, 2, that's the center. Meaning, right away from here to here will give us what? A. Then, if you are going to say, this is the x-axis, I'm putting what? X here. That means any point on the x-axis is up to this place. Then, from here to here, since this is the origin, will be B. And I already know that from the zero, which is the O, up to this place will also be what? Y. So now, how will I get this small distance? If I have here to be seven, and I say here is what? Four. The point A is 4. X is the highest point on the x-axis. Then it means for me to get this small distance, it could be 7 minus 4. The difference between 4 and 7. And that would be 3. Meaning if I add 3 to 7, to 4, I should be getting what? The 7. Replacing 4 with A and 7 with our X, it means it would be X minus what? A. That would be the distance between the A and and if I put any point here, let's say R. So the distance here will be X minus what? A. What about if I want to find the, the, the distance here between R and P? You know, all the way to this is Y. From here to here is B. So the difference here will be Y minus what? B. I'm trying to find the length of that right angle triangle which we know it will have this side vertical and horizontal. Now, still taking the Pythagoras theorem into consideration, it means it will be the longer side, which will be R squared equals the sum of the squares of the two shorter side, right? So that will be, first one will be X minus A all squared plus Y minus what? B all squared. That would be the use of our word, Pythagoras word theorem, in order to find this direction. Don't forget, we can also use the distance, that is the magnitude or the length. x1, x2, y1, y2. We can use that using the square root. You arrive at the same thing. So this is the equation of a circle when the center is not the origin. Remember the first one, when the center is origin, A will be zero, 
v will be zero, so it will be x squared y squared. Then you are there. All right. Now this is the second formula for the equation of a circle. But some will say, oh, this is an arithmetic uh, that we can easily expand an algebra. So let's expand this. The expansion of this also gives rise to the general formula of a circle. All right. So we are going to have r square equals to under algebra if you have a bracket square which is binomial you square the first meaning x square the product of the numbers in there twice their product x times negative a will be negative what x a or negative a x then twice that meaning two multiply so minus two a x then you square the last meaning the last term and that will be minus a square that will be plus what a square i believe you get the point if you use the full method you first of all get what four terms in the middle it will be ax that is minus ax minus as when you compute it gives you this value so right away we get this then here will also be square the first twice their product Square the last. Get it? So we have one, two, three for the first bracket, one, two, three for the second bracket. So now let's rearrange in such a way that this and this will have a counterpart, this and this will have a counterpart. So r square equals to x square plus y square, or again, minus 2ax minus 2by plus a square plus what b square i can see this and this i can send them there so that i have zero here so we're having x square plus y square minus 2ax minus by plus a square b square this is subtracted from both sides Therefore, minus r squared equals what? Zero. But if we check carefully, this is the radius, which will be a number. The radius could be four, it could be five, it could be six. This a is the center. We you know it could have been four, it could have been ten, it could be any number. So it means the a, b, and r are all constant. So imagine if they are one, five, ten. Definitely, I will get an answer which I will add to give me one single number. 4 square plus 3 square plus 9 square will still give me a number. So let's replace all of these with a constant C. That will make us x square plus y square 2ax. I think this is 2b. 2by. Then all of these become what? Plus C equals 0. Good. So this is what we have as the second the third equation of a circle but normally we use the center they say the center of this circle could be given as negative g and negative f so if we are going to replace this with the a and the b which is the center we are going to use the minus g and the minus f to replace a and what b so it means the minus is going, minus minus become positive. So I'll be having x squared y squared plus 2gx negative negative plus 2fy plus c equals what? Zero. So this becomes the, the third equation, the main general equation of a circle where we can find the center. You can find the radius all in this question because the center is given to this way. So whatever is in place of G, you see, whatever in place is in front of what? The X, all of them become what? The value for the center. So you equate, then you get the center. If you are looking for the radius, we are saying all of this is equal to the constant, meaning C could be equal to A square, B square, minus r squared i'm saying that in this question in this equation you can find the center you can also find the radius but there's no radius in the formula the radius is sitting in the c 
So C is equals to A squared, B squared, R squared, which is from here. So I can find the, the R from here. Meaning when I add R squared to both sides, R will come here. Then I'll subtract C from both sides. Meaning R squared will be equals to A squared plus B, then minus what? C, right? But what do we do? We're looking for R. We find the square root of all of them. So R is going to be the square root of what? A square, B square minus what? C. So that will be the value for finding R. Don't forget that A and the B will be replaced before G and F. I believe the concept of uh, coordinate geometry is uh, a bit clear. We are dealing with the equation of a circle with conditions given. One condition is that the center of the, uh, the circle is situated in the xy plane, the origin. Then we have that our formula. Then the second is where the center is not at the, the origin, but it has a value. So we go for this. So we can use this. The expansion of this formula give rise to the main general word equation of a circle. Where in that general equation, you can easily find the center of the circle. You can also find the radius of the circle. We get it. The center will be replaced by this. So this will be the center. Then the radius could also be found using this aspect. I believe this will be all clear when we start solving questions using the ideas we just developed. So watch this space for more examples, for more questions, how we can use any of these formulas to arrive at a question. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and comment. Bye-bye.